The clean is by far the most commonly executed Olympic weightlifting movement worldwide. It's the first one that people learn to do after the squat, mainly because the snatch is so difficult to do. However, I'm gonna be in this video giving you guys my tips and tricks that's gonna help you execute a better clean. My name's Sonny Webster and I competed in the 2016 Olympic Games and I have a personal best clean and jerk of 200 kilos, which is about 440 pounds. I've been lifting for over 17 years and helped over 35,000 people improve their Olympic weightlifting. So in this video, like I said, I'm gonna be giving you guys my tips and tricks that's gonna ensure you become a more efficient weightlifter. Now, I think it's only fair that before we get into the, this video, we discuss the difference between a power clean and a full clean. Which, if you're an out and out weightlifter, you're gonna hate me for saying this, so I'm gonna apologize, okay, on behalf of the weightlifting world or a squat clean. Full clean, squat clean, clean, they're all the same thing. But in the weightlifting world, no one likes the terminology squat clean, because there's no such thing as a squat clean. It's just a clean. The other variation which is most commonly learned when people start Olympic weightlifting and start doing the clean is a power clean. The reason why people opt for going for that power clean instead of a full clean is because it's an easier point to entry. The full clean requires a hell of a lot of mobility to get into the most efficient position, which is down here in the bottom position of the clean. Now, I want to discuss with you the things that become limiting in this bottom position for the clean, okay, from a mobility standpoint. The first thing that we need to address and talk in order to be able to get into a clean is ankle mobility. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you now why ankle mobility is so important. In order for me to be able to sit down into my bottom position of the clean, nice and deep here with my hips between my ankles, and maintain a neutral spine position, okay? This is butt wink, this is neutral, this is extended. We need to make sure we've got a good range of motion in the ankles, because you'll see how my knee is tracking over the toe in this bottom position. If my knee tracks back over or above my toe, you'll see how my lower back starts to round here, which isn't ideal. So that's the first thing. Mobility, ankles, needs to be key if you're gonna be efficient in your clean. Second thing is the hips. Now you can see how I'm sitting nice and deep down in my squat position here. You'll also notice how in this bottom position, my hips are sitting between my ankles and my knees staying out of my toes. Adductors, hips, glutes, and range of motion both internally and externally of the hip play a huge part in this. So that's our second thing from a mobility standpoint. But it's not the most difficult thing that people find when it comes to cleaning. It's your front rack mobility. So I just want to explain to you again, just so that we're all clear, what front rack is and what front rack mobility is. So the front rack refers to this position here when I'm addressed either front loaded with a barbell. Now front rack mobility becomes extremely important or difficult to maintain the lower and lower I go down into my bottom position of the clean. As I'm down here in my bottom position of the clean, you'll notice what will happen if my upper thoracic or my front rack mobility is bad is the upper back will start to round like so and the elbows will hit the knees. Now, I think it's only fair right now to just cue that part in the Olympic weightlifting bad lifts people catching the cleans and elbows hitting knees and wrists snapping. Five or six years ago, I did this myself and actually broke my wrist. So it's a no-go. We wanna make sure we're keeping as much distance between the knees and the elbows, which means front rack mobility needs to be bang on. Now the things that play a huge part in front rack mobility in terms of being able to sit nice and upright in the front position of the clean is loose lats, triceps, shoulders, and this range of motion here, which I think is most important, which is your upper thoracic range of motion. Q Beyonce video. Having this good range of motion in the upper thoracic allows us to create a nice big platform for the bar to rest on top of the shoulders and in turn takes the pressure off the wrist. Now people always say in Olympic weightlifting movements, oh my wrist hurt, it's because the bar is resting down on the wrist in the front rack instead of up on this platform in the shoulder. So if any of those things in particular that I just went through in terms of the important things for mobility of a clean or being able to be efficient in the clean, hit home, i.e. your mobility, then go and check out the Weightlifters Mobility Manual. I'll put a link below this video. That'll give you a step-by-step -step process to follow through to improve your range of motion in the clean. So anyway, back to the video. First thing I address or think about when I'm getting set up for my clean is first of all, 
thinking about what am I going to be focusing on? So it's normally something just above eye level. It's really important for us to pick something out to focus on so that we don't get distracted halfway through the lift. Last thing you want to be doing when you're a little bit weird is looking down at the floor. You look down at the floor, the chest follows suit, and then the bar will follow shortly after. No good. So I pick my point to focus on. The next thing that I'm going to be thinking about is my foot position. So I want you to come in here and take a look at what I'm doing with my feet in this setup. You'll notice how I'm using my weightlifting shoes, I'm rised up to my heels. But what I do when I'm set up my clean is I have my toes pointing straight ahead. Now when I'm snatching I'm like this, when I'm cleaning I'm like this. The reason why is because as I set up for my clean I'll start in a much higher start position. Okay, so my bum is higher in the setup position for the clean than it is versus the, versus the snatch. So therefore, my shins are more vertical, which allows the bar to track straight off the floor without the knees being any, in any issue. So I like to have my toes pointing straight ahead and then feeling like I'm spreading the floor very slightly, okay, to create tension in my setup position. Whatever you do, don't think about driving the knees out during the pull, okay? That's just no good. Driving the knees out causes the weight to go to the outside edge of the foot, which means it has to come in when we go into extension. So instead, you'll get the exact same effect in the setup. Instead of driving the knees out and putting the weight to the outside edge of the foot, by simply just thinking about spreading the floor. I'm then engaging all the muscles on the outside edges of the hips, quads, etc. Anything that I need to be engaged in the posterior chain when I initiate the lift. So, I've got toes pointing straight ahead, bar is on the shins. The reason why it's important that the bar on the shins here is so the weight's over the middle of the foot. We want the weight over the middle of the foot so that when we initiate the lift, we're pushing right down through the flats of the feet. What I don't want is too much weight in the heels when I set up because else my bum will shoot up and equally I don't want too much weight in my toes because it's gonna pull me forward. So keeping that weight on the shins in the start position, is key. Now, I'm sorry if I have to say this, but hook grip is so important when you're Olympic weightlifting. If you're not using hook grip, then it's gonna make it very difficult for you to keep your arms relaxed in the lift, which is common reason why a lot of people will early arm bend or take too much of the weight in the upper body, and then in turn, slow into the receiving position for clean. So, I'm gripping, narrow grip. I always like to think if we don't know where your grip width is when you're setting up for the clean, just put your thumbs on your hips and just run them down your legs and then take a grip on the bar. You'll see I'm about half an inch or an inch or three inches, if anyone's asking, away from the start of the knurling in my setup. Bar is then on the shins. My knees and arms then stay in line. I'm not forcing out here. I just want to make sure my arm's straight because the last thing I want to do is as I pull away, in any energy before the bar's actually lifting, so I'll make sure I'm locked in here. All the way it feels like it's in my quads now, my knees and arms in line, and then from there I pull my shoulder blades back and down. Once I'm pulling my shoulder blades back and down, you'll see how I'm creating tension then in my mid to upper back, which then means as I initiate the movement, all the way is going through the legs. So that's our first step that we need to go over, and I just wanna recap a couple of those key points for the setup for the clean. We've got weight in the middle of the foot. We've got bar touching the shins. We've got knees and arms in line in that setup position. And then from there, we're pulling shoulder blades back and down to create tension. Now, what I think about doing when I'm initiating the movement or starting the movement of the clean is I think about pushing the floor away with the legs. So once I'm in my setup position here, I'm pushing the floor away with the legs and thinking about maintaining the angle of my back from the floor. I'm just going to show you this from side arm. Okay, you'll see here as I'm set, I'm maintaining that angle till the bar gets above the knees. The bar then runs all the way up the shins and stays nice and close to the body throughout the movement. As the bar comes past the knee here and transitions up to mid thigh, I'm thinking about letting the bar brush. So the drill in which I go through to help people actually get used to this bar brushing the thigh is getting them to think about pushing the floor the way with the legs, keep it touching. When they get to mid thigh, they just think about jumping. Thinking about jumping then allows the bar just to brush the thigh through the middle, and then naturally the shoulders will go through the ears if you keep your arms relaxed. But that allows the bar through this middle phase of the lift to stay nice and close to the body. Keeping the bar really nice and close to the body through this middle phase of the lift will allow me to efficiently 
drop down into my receiving position for the clean. So think brush, not hit. We don't want the bar to go in this direction, we don't want the body to go in this direction, we want everything to go up. So that's a key focus in my head. The next thing that we need to address or think about with the clean is how high do we need to pull the bar in order to catch the clean. Now, this is where, like I said, is the big difference between the power clean and the clean, is that in order to catch the clean, and this is a nice, easy way to work out, and we'll kind of use this wall here as a demo, in order to catch the clean, as I go down into my bottom position, if we put a little marker here against the wall, okay, in the bottom of my squat, as to where I will be when I receive the clean, you'll notice here on the plate, it's where the M mark is, okay? Whereas if I stand up from here, okay, I haven't moved the bar, but now if you look at my body again, you'll see that bar is a much higher than that mid to upper thigh. Obviously I need a little bit more heart on the bar to allow me to go down and getting into my cat position, but it's not much higher than that. However, generally a power clean is caught above 90 degrees, bend at the knee, which is here. I then, therefore, have to pull the bar a shitload higher in order to catch a power clean, which is why I will argue you will always be better or lift heavier doing a full clean if you master it than you will do on a power clean because you don't have to pull the bar so high. Back to the clean. We've worked out this is as high as I need to pull it. So therefore, practicing that drill that we were just doing on this bar when I was thinking about jumping through the middle, there's enough height on the bar in order for me to get into my receiving position. Now what's important as I move or transition into the receiving position is the way that the upper body moves. Okay, common mistake that people will make with this is when they do a clean, after extension, they'll do this. So they'll let the hand get higher than the elbows which creates distance between me and the bar which then in turn can sometimes pull you forward in the catch the clean. Whereas what I'm actually thinking after this extension phase after I jump is thinking about letting the elbow turn around the PVC so that bar comes up, elbow turns around the hand into my receiving position instead of hand around elbow, which keeps it nice and close to the body as I come into the receiving position. Now, next thing to address or to think about when we're talking about this transitional phase from extension or after we jump here to our receiving position is that the feet need to move up, okay? They have to move up into the catch position. And the reason why they have to move out is so that we make enough space for when we go into the bottom position for the hips to sit between the ankles. If my feet don't move out and they stay in my start position, it's gonna be very difficult for me again on that front rack to sit nice and upright, okay? So, feet need to move out. I like to move them out to the point they're in the same position as they would be when I'm front squatting. So, we're in that position now where we're pushing the floor away, we keep it nice and close, we're touching through the middle, we jump, elbows turn through, feet move out, and then I'm standing up and out the bottom position. Now, one of the key areas that people struggle with when they're learning how to do a full clean is the bar crashing on them. And if that is you, I want you to wait till next week where I'm doing a video specifically on stopping the bar crashing on you, okay? Because I've got a top tip which really helps with this, okay? So make sure you go and watch that video. But that's a common mistake that people will have. Getting that correct and making sure you're smoothing this catch position will help you stand up more efficiently. It's important, I'm just gonna show you the clean again, that when you're catching the clean in the receiving position, as you catch it, you stand straight up out the bottom. Catching this bounce out of that bottom position will help you be more efficient. Now the final thing that I wanna kinda of give you just to help you a little bit more with that clean, like with the fundamentals, is just what I'm thinking about from a breathing point of view. Now I know it's one of those things that all people always address with me. Sonny, what are you doing with your breathing when you're Olympic weight thing? I think of it like this, I'm just gonna walk you through. As I get set at the bar, I take a nice few deep breaths while I'm shitting myself because it's a heavy weight. And when I get relaxed, I take one, two, three, I take a deep breath. I then hold that breath all the way till I'm standing up out the sticking point. So I'm making sure I'm holding that breath and keeping braced and tight or creating tension 
all the way up until I'm up out the sticking point. I'm never breathing throughout the lift because I don't want to relax in any of the positions. So just to recap, a couple of those key things that we've been over there for a clean, and these are just the, like the fundamentals. It's the important stuff that you need to master first before any of the more technical stuff. Okay, I don't like to overcomplicate this. Set up position, toes straight ahead, bar touching the shins. Slightly higher star position, making sure the arms lock straight. Keeping the bar close to the body as past the knee and think about letting it brush the thigh and let the shoulders go through the ears at this top position as you jump. In terms of height that we need to get the bar to, just up to belly button height is absolutely ample if you've got the mobility to catch deep. If you don't, sort your life out and do the mobility manual. Once you've got that high, you're then going to drop from here and turn the elbow around the hand into the receiving position to be nice and upright. Remember, thinking about de-accelerating that bar a little bit into the bottom position so you can catch the bounce and stand straight up out the hole is going to make you more efficient and much better at doing the clean. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there's some tips and tricks for you to take away. I'm so new to this YouTube stuff, but I really do want to continue to make some more longer format content for you. Please provide me with a little bit of feedback below. Let me know in the comments. Give it a like. Please share it and show me some love. If you've been looking at this t-shirt the whole way through this video going, that is such a sick t-shirt. Sonny, where do I get it? All the shorts. Head to www.bigfriesupplies.com and you can get the latest baller drop. Big love, guys. See you later.